Hello. Well, apparently uh, Churchill, once Winston Churchill, is once more in the firing line. Not this time from a bunch of hooting savages who want to tear down his statue. Oh, no. This is far more insidious. Apparently, the BBC made a segment in one of their flagship programmes, News at 10, in which they talk about Churchill as a bit of a bastard who managed to starve three million Bengali citizens to death. To this, oh, in 1942 43. To this end, they succeeded in finding one um, Rudrangshu Mukherjee of Ashoka University in India uh, to tell everyone that Churchill was seen as a precipitator uh, of mass killings due to his policies. Notice the weasel words here a precipitator. He couldn't exactly say that Churchill killed. Indians, but he could call him a precipitator, which could mean just about anything. I mean, any politician could be a precipitator of anything, couldn't he? Or she, indeed. And then to back themselves up, they hauled out an Oxford academic, Oxford, who else, where else, called Yasmin Khan, who, according to her biography, has written for The Guardian. Well, enough said, I suppose. It's interesting how the BBC lighted upon her, isn't it? I mean, there are hundreds of historians in the United Kingdom, but they just happened to contact this one historian who just happens to work for The Guardian. And she says he could be guilty of prioritising white lives over Asian lives by not sending relief. Well, he could be guilty of being impolite to Lady Astor, but that's not exactly the proof that he was, is it? Again, all implication, all assertions without counter-argument, all criticism without context. Well, there are many other historians Indian historians, let alone British ones, who point out that Churchill was faced with an impossible choice, uh, feeding his soldiers or feeding starving peasants. And given that, he actually did try to do something. It wasn't marvellous. But considering that Britain was in a state of total war at the time, it was the best he could do. And in fact, there are many studies which claim that the problem wasn't Britain at all, but the Bengal government, which I shouldn't have to point out was not British, but I do have to point it out because organisations like the BBC seem to be implying that it was. Ah, It wasn't British and it was inefficient and corrupt and completely unprepared. The Bengal famine was triggered by a cyclone and flooding Uh, in uh, 1942, which destroyed crops and infrastructure. Historians agree that many of the three million deaths could have been averted with a more effective relief effort, but are divided over the extent to which Churchill was personally to blame. Yogita Limaye, uh, apologies if I mispronounce that, the BBC News India correspondent who led the report, so that makes her absolutely 100% reliable, does it not, said many Indians blamed him for making the situation worse. Yeah, I'm sure many, many Indians did. But notice how she says making the situation worse. And then the whole tone of the item suggests that Churchill actually engineered the situation. It's a whole lot. Well, you know, sorry about the strong language, folks, but it's a whole lot of complete bollocks. And it's nowhere near either proof or even reasonable analysis. Historians suggested the report attributed too much of the blame onto Churchill when other factors were more significant like the weather, for instance. 
Uh, to thank our Roy, a professor in economic history at the LSE, that's the London School of Economics, by the way, um, argues India's vulnerability to weather-induced famine was due to its unequal distribution of food. He also blames a lack of investment in agriculture and failings by the local government. Winston Churchill was not a relevant factor behind the 1943 Bengal famine, he told the Times. The agency with the most responsibility for causing the famine and not doing enough was the government of Bengal. So you see, you can make arguments about one or the other, but it seems to me to be, well, particularly, how should I put this? fortuitous that the BBC chose to make this item at this time. OK, obviously, they might have been sparked into action by the rampaging hordes of iconoclasts, some of whom have been defacing Churchill's statue, painting it with the word racist. I think that's what they did, and threatening to pull it down. But does anybody wonder whether it might have something to do with the fact that Boris Johnson not only deeply admires Winston Churchill, but has actually written a book about him? Do you think that the BBC, which is an organisation under threat of losing its licence fee funding at the hands of the present Conservative government, headed by Boris Johnson. Uh, uh, do you think that there might be an element of spite in this whole operation? Do you think they might be having a go at Churchill as a sort of proxy for Johnson? Because I do. Secretary of State to India, uh, Leopold Amory, recorded that Churchill suggested any aid would be insufficient because of Indians breeding like rabbits. And then it says, however, despite his unsavoury comments about Indians, Churchill's defenders insist that he did try to help and delays were a result of conditions during the war. Good grief, you know, there were people starving in England, never mind India, although I admit that was a serious famine. But back to the rabbits comment, that thing about breeding like rabbits is something that people didn't apply only to Indians, you know. I'm reminded of Vanity Fair, the novel by William Makepeace Thackeray, um, because I remember a reference in that to rabbits. Now, I, I don't remember exactly where it turns up, but for those of you who haven't read that book, I'm sure I'll, I'll find it. I'll find, there's a short paragraph somewhere in it where... A doctor goes to consult a family about to um, pop its 13th child. The name of the husband is Sir Lapin Warren. Lapin being lapin, the French word for rabbit, and Warren being the English word for the hole in the ground where a rabbit lives. With the only two obvious implication that such families could be likened to a lot of rabbits rather than people. Indelicate is the word we could use about the Victorian attitude to big families, because it was considered highly indelicate at that time to have too many children. Uh, it, it was the sort of thing that perhaps you'd find uh, among the irresponsible working classes, for instance, but it was very unfashionable among civilised, sophisticated, modern people. Now, I, I, as a matter of fact, I've often speculated that it has something to do with the fact that women were expected to wear very tight corsets and have very narrow waists, uh, but that's another matter. I'll find the reference uh, to, um, to the Thackeray thing. I'll also 
see if I can find a reference because I know that some British journals and newspapers were actually criticising Queen Victoria for having too many children and making references to rabbits. I'm not sure I'll be able to find that, but I'll, I'll give it a try. So this is the Queen that they're referring to as breeding like rabbits. Hmm. Uh, you know, if I, I, I can't spend too long looking for it. And I know it was a sort of sideways reference. So if I don't find it, you'll just have to believe me. But that Thackeray thing should be fairly easy to turn up. So that rabbit's reference would be thrown at anyone who had too many children for uh, their Victorian sensibilities. And we have here an apparent situation where the BBC, who should know better, are judging Churchill by today's standards. However, I don't think they are judging Churchill by any standards at all. I think they're judging Johnson and they found a back door to sticking the knife in by dragging down Johnson's hero, Winston Churchill. It's pretty disgusting when you come to think about it, isn't it? Why don't you treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of promotional merchandising? The Granny Opteryx t-shirt or the Granbo mug, which comes in two flavours, with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. And whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.